Uh, I will call the meeting to order. It's agenda date, time, and location were properly announced. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, we'll start off with the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of January 15th, 2024. Is there a motion to approve? Um, Rainey, is there a second? I'll second. Jeff, um, any corrections? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Then um, next we will uh, need to approve the checks. Let's see. Is there a motion to approve for the month of January the amount of $1,156,739.18? Second. Is there a second? Second. Matt? I did have a couple questions okay. on this area. Um, Two questions from Rini. One was about a check that was issued to uh, Wood Genix. And um, as you will see, our furniture is in the process of being built, our elementary furniture. Um, first in production will be teacher desks, and then uh, student desks are all designed, ready to go. I'm really excited. If you remember, this is um, the partnership that we had with Bruce Freer Foundation. So half the money came from the referendum, half of it um, from the grant. And by the time we get to the end of April, we'll have pretty much all new furniture for our students, uh, with chairs, uh, desks, and teacher desks. And also, as we're talking about furniture, last week, I believe it was Tuesday or Wednesday, every one of our teachers got their new teacher chairs. So um, just uh, slowly rolling out the new furniture. Um, soon we won't be sitting on these 1950 uh, chairs either, but be patient, we're slowly doing it. <laughs> um, the other question was a check that was issued for $22,000 to Waldo Oil. Um, another, I think, really great example of our partnership. You know, we've purchased our own buses and we work with, we have them stored over at TNT with Dave. Um, a year into that, Dave's like, you know what, we could save a lot of money because we can get a tanker full of diesel at a time now if we go together. So we put the investment uh, two years ago to buy a, let's go, 1,000 gallon. Uh, it's a big one. It takes a whole tanker. And we now um, have, have it, uh, you know, a monitoring system that when it goes into our buses and when it goes into his equipment, and then when we get to a certain point, usually about twice a year, we're buying a tanker full because we don't go through fuel as, as quickly as he does. And uh, we're saving thousands of dollars by not paying gas pay or gas station prices. We're paying the price of gas stations. So just another example of finding different ways to make our uh, pennies go a little bit further. I get just one question about the desk that will replace the old one. What are we doing with those? Um, so that's a good question. I, there, there's a lot that we've been salvaging that um, probably should have gone into a dumpster years ago. Um, things that are of value, we'll have to talk about what we want to do. Um, we're going to put it, we're actually, Mike Lefevre and I are buying, uh, looking at purchasing two shipping containers um, and having those shipping containers for the next two years and then we'll resell them and probably get pretty much what you pay for them or, or that storage piece. Uh, and we'll be putting some things in there and we can talk as a, as a board, do we want to do an auction, do we want to do a community piece. Some of the stuff doesn't have a lot of value, but uh, there could be value to the right people. So I don't have an answer for that, but I'd love to hear some guidance from this group as we keep moving down that road. Any other questions on uh, checks? Yeah, one more check that I have. 45,000, that was for the, the cable over to the daycare, right? And those are the ones that were paid for from half of it from the, the cert, uh, certification from yeah. students, right? Yeah. So we do something a little bit different here. Um, my previous district, when students graduate and they're certified in a different area, our district gets anywhere up to $800 for each one of the students that, that are actually career ready. And 
Uh, Mr. Wills does a fantastic job, especially with Microsoft certifications, um, that when he needs equipment, we actually give him that money for his program. So of that, a vast majority was what he earned having students graduate from certification. So just another piece of how we can keep up on equipment. Um, and I, I believe in priming the pump, right? Like when, when staff see that their hard work gets them the things that they need, um, it just helps them keep striving for those things. So Steve's honestly been the, the poster child of how you make sure students are graduating with things that they need. I also think part of that also was the money. Oh, there's a couple of right. writers. We didn't get the money. Yeah, I thought he was more than 20 some thousand for that job. Yeah. Good. No, thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, the cash summary. Uh, no questions on this and nothing really to, to point out this month. Okay. Um, donations. Looks like we have quite a few. Yes. Um, it was quiet for the last couple of months and then all of a sudden here we go. We have five of them. So. Congratulations to Mrs. Reed for two different projects, one for $165 called Creative Learning Projects and another one for $236 for Beginning the Joy of Reading. Congratulations to Mrs. Dom for Books for All Readers for $350. Um, Michael Diaz, kind of a nice little uh, surprise there, works at Dick's Sporting Goods and uh, through working there found approximately 40 brand new or slightly used cleats and asked if uh, our students would uh, would, it, would use those and we we're like heck yes so um, we have 40 sets of cleats for our students that uh, uh, may be looking for them and then um, this was last <coughs> I believe Bertram was cleaning out um, some of their areas and their high-tech stuff that is old is still new to us and they asked if we would love to go through the things that they had and see what we could use so Lee and his crew um, unpacked that stuff and got some networking equipment and things like that from, from them so There you go. It was a good month. Okay. Um, comments from the public? I didn't have anybody sign up. So, no comments tonight? Referendum discussion. Um, just a couple things. Uh, if you have seen, uh, this is the update. Uh, we have the parking phasing. We just, you know, we had in-service today, had a great in-service. And part of the in-service was sharing the phasing of how this is going to get rolled out um, and then also the corresponding parking that goes with it so um, this plan is really what I the way I explained it to the staff today it's really kind of a domino effect when one area gets done you know as you look there when purple gets done that means orange can start um, getting worked on because we can move the kitchen stuff to the new purple area and then when orange is done, we can go to that kind of red magenta where the libraries are um, because the library is a move and then we have those areas. A um, couple of the big things here, and I'll, I'll take questions on phasing if anybody wants. I don't want to be too laborious on this. Um, locker rooms in that kind of pink uh, will be starting somewhere mid-May and, and uh, should be done uh, right around the beginning of August. And the green area is going to start pretty much May 28th and it should be done by the time we get back to school in uh, uh, September. So it's going to go quick, it's going to go fast. Uh, parking is going to have its complications, uh, but we have a five part, five phase parking plan that will slowly roll out phase one. Phase one for parking will start March 1st. 
and um, we will be getting a detailed explanation out for that. Phase one will last till spring break. When we get back from spring break, we'll come to phase two. And then phase three will start in August and uh, we'll roll from there. So any questions on any of that fun stuff? Um, we talked with Sarah, Sarah and I spoke last week. Um, we, I think this year we have a plan. We're going to meet again now that we have the phasing plan. Uh, I can't speak as much for what it's going to look like in 25. So um, we'll get through one year at a time and see how we can do that. It could. It could. Um, that area is going to be ahead. Through. So. It'll, it'll work out, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, there, there's, I think the, the thing with the auditorium is it's kind of used every season, right? You know, there's a fall season, a winter, a spring, and then a summer season. So, I actually thought about probably the most ideal time would be right after the game, like the middle of January, until like, the season. But they could probably pass it somewhere else, and then maybe they'd have a new date. If we're not too bad, we'd be done. And so that would be my two cents. Because I, I just wondered how is this going to work? Because we don't want them to go. Right. Yeah. So we'll we'll work through some of those. And uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't got to the summer twenty five yet. I'm worried <laughs> about March of twenty four right now. So yes, yeah. No, but I appreciate that point. Any any other questions or anything else you're looking for? Uh, was there anything else, Becky? Oh yes, yes. Sorry, April uh, April board meeting. Uh, I think we'll do it at five o'clock. We're going to do a groundbreaking. We'll have a lot of the foundation and things in, uh, but it'll be a great opportunity to get some hard hats and golden shovels and a great picture to be out there. So plan for April. You know, and we don't know. So my question to this group is, we don't know what kind of committee meetings we'll have beforehand, so I was thinking five. Is it better if we push it maybe 6.15? It, it'll, the ceremony will be 15, 20 minutes. Would we want to make it part of the board meeting? It's lighter. What works best for the game? Because it would be nice to have everybody there. Does it make five o'clock work? Why don't we stick with five o'clock then? Yeah. Remind us again. I will. I will. Great. Anything else on uh, referendum? Okay. That takes us into um, the petition to alter the school district boundaries. And Mr. and Mrs. Is it Keenan? Keenan? Do you want to you want to stand up, or you, we'll get you the mic. You can sit. You can however you'd like to. Put it. Thank you, everybody, for giving us a chance to to talk today. We are Ryan and Holly Keenan. Uh, we are parents of an 11-year-old boy named Egan and a 9-year-old girl named Aria. They are actually students at Oosburg School District. Um, they're very active students there. Um, the other students and staff there, they really consider our kids part of their family. Currently, there is several students who are bused and picked up on our road, and then the bus continues past our house on the way to school. We asked the bus company if they would love to pick up our kids, and they said that would be just fine. However, they're not allowed to pick up students outside of their district without permission. We reached out to the Random Lake superintendent to ask for that permission, and it was denied. Currently, my wife works full-time at a hospital. I also work full-time at a company in a different county. And right now, we are currently able to, every day, get our kids safely to school ourselves. Next year, that's going to change as our son enters middle school. His school start time will be different than his sister's. So we will no longer have the ability to, on our own, get both of our kids to school or pick up both of our kids because of the different start and end times. So basically what that comes down to is they said, well, if you could get your kid to a bus stop that's in the Oosburg School District, we will pick them up. The closest bus stop is about a third of a mile. 
while that isn't a very long distance, the road that we live on is a main road into the village of Hingham. So it's very busy. It is also very narrow, and there's some hills there. So that offers a lot of safety concerns for us. So as our kids next year start their new bus stop assignment, they will be walking down this road, um, and the posted speed limit is about 45 miles per hour. We often see people do more than 60 miles per hour. Um, we are worried that each day when we send our kids to school that they might get hit by a car going too fast or that somebody who's not paying attention may not see them or even expect to see children on a country road, uh, especially early in the morning. So we um, plan to send our son to school um, he will walk to the bus stop and leave his sister behind, and then about an hour later, his sister will walk to school without her big brother down the road to the bus stop by herself and get on the bus each and every day. So what we were asking is to have our school district boundaries redrawn to include um, Oostburg to be uh, part of where our residence is currently, so by extending the map about a third of a mile. Um, I do have some pictures, um, and we can pass these around. These are this is the the bus stop location where our kids would are proposed to be picked up, and will be picked up next year. Um, this is looking up towards our house. As you can see, that there is trees right up against the road on both sides. It's very narrow there. Our next picture kind of shows the halfway point. Um, what this picture really shows is this hill here, as you you'll see. On the other side of the road, the motorist doesn't know who's on our side of the road, and our kids don't know the motorists are there either because it's all uphill. And then our last picture kind of shows from our driver, which is the top of the hill, looking down towards the bus stop, and it is a, a long distance with lots of trees and things like that that offer potential safety hazards as our kids try to, to walk to school. So that is why we came to speak with you guys tonight. So thank you. I wanted to have the board uh, look at this. I'm going to share, you can share those pictures. I'd love you to share that around. Does this, I, I tried to go on to Google Maps today to represent where your property is compared to where the, um, the, the line is for the district. Does that look about right? Correct. So the, the proposed bus stop is just beyond that yeah. line. So here I have, if you want to pass these around too, you can kind of want to be able to show you what we're doing. And then as I'm passing it around, um, I guess the administrative recommendation for this one is, um, and, and it's up for you to decide, but with situations like this, when we get to places where our students are picked up in other uh, districts or other districts would like to get picked up in, in our district, um, all districts we, we kind of agree to deny it because it's a, a can of worms that we don't know where it would end. So when you asked, um, that's why that was denied. It's just something that, that we have done because where do we stop if we, if we do that? Um, and, and then as far as the petition for the property, our uh, recommendation would be to deny. And, and the reason that 99% of districts deny these recommendations is this land has been part of the district for as long as the district has been here and will be for as long as we have a district. And in most all cases, um, districts deny this for, for that reason. So nothing personal against you guys. I understand your story and, and everything else. Um, this is just kind of standard operating uh, procedures as far as the board recommendation, but truly it's up to the board uh, to make decisions from there. Does anyone have any questions that they want to ask? I have a few more questions. Yes, go ahead. How long have you been living at this current current address? So we've been living here this past December marked ten years. And the proposed pickup area was the district of Eastburg picked you up. Is that part of the plan? Is it, is it a stop where there's already a pickup? 
correct. There is there is a student who is um, in between grades of my son and my daughter who gets picked up at that location. Um, we do not know the family uh, very well, but uh, that would be the proposed pickup location starting in fall. Yeah, before and after school and things like that, we have not reached out to them at all. Uh, one of the, um, the issues that comes with that um, is if that family were to move, um, then that opportunity would be, kind of be back in the same situation. Um, so um, relying on something like that, while that could be a great short term or even a full term solution, um, we, we wanted something a little bit more permanent so that we can uh, make sure that we can continue our careers and then our kids can get to school safely. At the edge of the hour attendance area. Oh. Yeah. Well, good question. Yes. How come when your kids went to school, they didn't come to learn them instead of just bringing their kids? Yep. Great question. So uh, before our kids were school age, they were um, in a daycare, and that daycare happened to be in the Oosburg School District. So now that they've spent over half of their student career with Oosburg. Um, they'd like to stay with Oosburg. Um, and so that's why uh, they're not interested in, in switching school districts and why they ended up in Oosburg in the first place. Yes, correct. So currently both of our children are enrolled in their before and after school program. And that works out really well. Um, our son will age out right after summer ends and this new school uh, year starts. He will no longer be able to attend that uh, program. And so he will not have a place to, to go before or after school until um, one of us can come and, and pick him up. So if he, he's middle school, is it? He's going to be middle school. Correct. He will be. So what time? What time is he? Seven. I think seven twenty for middle school, and then um, elementary school is eight twenty. So it's like an hour difference. <coughs> okay. So like if you took them to Eastburg, and she went to the the yeah the school of town across the road. Yeah. Right. And he started school. That doesn't work. No, because we drop off at six thirty in the morning. And school doesn't start until 7.20, so doors don't, are not on even open. Are there any questions? I've been here, and I know we have had other families and other situations for I wouldn't say it with Oosburg but other surrounding districts and it was I was early in my career before I knew these kind of things I asked and it was kind of you know that's uh, something you just don't know so we've had other of our students be denied the same stops from because where do you stop from if you don't you can set precedents where you're going to set a precedence that um, you don't need to worry about unfortunately like half of our road is randomly and the other half is Oosburg. it's got a weird cutoff point we are just um east of highway 57 and so we we end up the first quarter of a mile ends up being the random lake school district and then everything after that is is the Oosburg school district So this, uh, what you're asking tonight is the petition to change school districts. Change boundaries, yeah. So that's what the motion would need to be 
to approve or disapprove. So if something like that were to happen, though, so we would just be like, all right, this is the line, and then the square over here is all by itself this little island, or does that mean like the line is right? Because I feel like we could lose the way that school district lines are drawn are so weird. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. And like randoms is really awful, right? Like you know, we go in all sorts of like and really like different. a little yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know, like I mean, it feels like this could end up being like, oh well, random has all these little strips. Let's just cut all those off, and here we are. And now all of a sudden we've lost twenty percent of our school district. So how does it? I mean, is it a line move? Is it a like chunk? What happens when these guys move? I get what you're saying. Like I understand mm -hmm. the situation you guys are in. Yep. Thank you. All like farm fields are like private property to the east of us, like almost to that where that house comes to. So there's no with our house, and then almost a quarter mile. When, is it a quarter mile? No more. So, then to that next house, that's Gooseburg. So. But if that ever sold for subdivision or something, yeah. then we've lost that whole area. Mm -hmm. Are you waiting for someone to make a motion? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's where we're at. I'm willing to try and move from here. I would just always see another option for changing the school district. Because like you said, it's like an island. I... I, I don't know. Um, I want to say a couple of years ago, we had another request, and that was on the other side over here in, uh, in Rocky County. And they proposed that, because um, it, it, theirs was really weird, because the house right in, in their front yard was Ozaki, and then everything behind that house was random lake. So their driveway went right past this house that was Ozaki. And then everything else is random way. So they wanted to propose to us that we trade property. Like if they could get someone that was in the random way, you know, to switch to be another property, and that was that was still a no go, you know, because they were trying to say that, you know, here's equal value uh -huh. for property. But you know, like Mike says, where where do you stop? And we are here representing the taxpayers, and if we start giving away our property that we get taxes on, you know, we're not really doing our job either to protect what is our, I, I don't know, our revenue stream, I guess. And, you know, I have to say that when I bought, when we bought our house, we thought we were in the school district. We bought our house to go there. 100 years ago, you know, because that's where we thought we wanted to be, and actually sent our first child to us for like two weeks or whatever, and found out we're not in Pittsburgh and had to move. And which turned out great because Grand Lake is fantastic. I have to tell you that I, I've not been to Pittsburgh, so I can't say, <laughs> but I'll tell you, Grand Lake is pretty fantastic. Um, so, you know, I really feel for you too that, you know, you buy a property, you think one thing, or you know, you don't necessarily think about it when you buy it when you have stuff rented. Yeah. And just finding daycare was like, I mean, when we moved into the house, just finding a daycare was even hard enough. Yes. So I mean, we happened to find one that was convenient for me because I didn't drop off, so I was, I was on my way to work. I'm like, I'm heading east. I might as well head to Gibbsville, found somebody, and that's just what worked out good. Right. So, so I mean, you know, I really feel for you. Um, I just, I, I feel like we're here though, representing our taxpayers that we can to protect our boundaries. So that that's my opinion. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion to deny the two requests that we want to qualify for this. I fully understand your concern, your situation. Thank you, Chris, for coming here and sharing your thoughts. Make it work for you and 
high police that we have in place, and I think we have to represent them at the current residents of this district and the community. We start with the Be there for many, many years, and the people have a successful career going back to the past. So, I think we should put a lot of people in the that we have to do in the past. So, I think we should try to do the best we can at the time. I understand. Thank you. Yes, Jeff, is there a second? Katie? Um, any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can give it to Lisa. So I'm going to invite uh, Lisa up, as you may or may not know. Um, Lisa has now, she's in her second year? Um, third. Third year. Okay, third year of IMC specialist, our library, librarian. And as we're learning the job and going through, I can tell you this is my first time in seven years that we've actually done this. Lisa has been going through the program, and she's like, I think we're supposed to present a library plan every year to the board. Um, so now that we are at a place that we have a plan, um, I'm inviting you. So you can do it right from there if you'd like. Um, just talk a little bit about the highlights of the plan. This is something that you're going to see every year. Um, so from there, Lisa, go ahead and kind of talk a little bit about the library. You don't even have to go through the presentation, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is part of your package, but uh, just right. share a little bit what's happening. All right. Well, um, yeah, this is my third year. I have to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, do I have control of this or no? Okay. All right. Um, and it's been great so far. Um, I've really enjoyed it. And um, so I really put a lot of thought into um, the plan. I did um, take some of what Kathy Beekler had as well. Um, so I want to give her some credit. Um, and I think everybody read this already. Is that right? Or saw this already? Okay. <laughs> um, so um, generally, you know, general policies and procedures, uh, pretty standard, I think, for most districts. Um, basically, you know, how many books students can check out. Um, right now it's three, but if they need more than three, um, that is fine. Um, they do have to be paid for um, if they are lost or damaged. So that's something that is part of, of the plan. Um, with our new library, um, we're going to have K-4 through 12th grade. So um, I definitely want to, this is new, um, to be very clear about who can check out what. Um, and I know that, you know, there's younger students that have higher reading levels and there's um, students in high school that have lower ones. Um, however, um, there are some um, books that we have, um, especially that are targeted for high school, that do contain some profanity or more mature topics. Um, so I am going to be labeling all the books that are young adult. Um, and it'll be in the system as a young adult, and that's basically ages 12 and up. So that's sixth grade and up. Um, and if anybody who is below sixth grade would like to check a book out, I'm going to have a form that parents can fill out and return. Um, it's up to them if they want their child to read something that's considered young adult. Right now we don't have that. Um, so sometimes these books do slip into the hands of younger kids. Um, and I haven't heard anything from parents, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but then we also have um, books that are really for ninth grade and up. And I want to label those as well, because I don't think they're appropriate for middle 
um, for the most part because of the themes. Um, however, again, I would like to have a form. So if there is an eighth grader that wants to read something that's considered high school, they could have a parent um, override that, I guess, is what I was thinking. Um, because, you know, everybody's different and, and some 7th and 8th graders might be more mature than a high schooler or, you know, vice versa. So that's what I was thinking there. Um, this selection policy is the same as what it was um, when Mrs. Beekler was here. Um, we definitely put a lot of thought into what we purchase. Uh, we look at reviews, we look at um, curriculum. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to this. Um, if you want to go to the next one. Um, so curriculum, um, what's interesting to students. I do have students that request books, um, award-winning books. So Caldecott or Newberry Awards, I like to include those. Um, Battle of the books. So there's a, a lot of things that go into um, the selection process. And this just kind of goes through that as well. And then, um, of course, there's a time when we need to get rid of some of these books. Um, right now, we're really trying to go through the high school and through the elementary library and weed. Um, and basically, the criteria that I'm using is this, that if they're worn or damaged, um, beyond repair, they can be weeded. Um, if they're not checked out in 10 or more years, uh, ah, there's a lot in the high school <laughs> that are like that. So they will be weeded. Um, if we have a lot of duplicate copies that we don't need anymore, if um, information is inaccurate, um, we'll get rid of that. And then one thing I did add was I really do want them to be recycled if possible, or before they're even recycled, I really want um, teachers, students, or any other nonprofit organizations to take them um, if they would like them. And then if nobody wants them and um, they really don't fit in the library anymore, then we would recycle them or dispose of them. I, I think we have a, over 20,000 books in the um, elementary middle school library and probably about 15,000 in here. Um, so I'm hoping to get down to 20,000 between the two of them. Um, but I, I want to follow this first and then see where we're at. Um, but I, I really do think looking, especially at the high school, a lot of these books have not been checked out in a long, long time um, and don't even fit somewhat with some of the, the curriculum that we have. We are looking at possibly keeping some. Because we'll have a ball room for about 20,000 books is what our architects are saying. Um, and a book room, but we'll kind of see how the process goes. It's been a big task and this is going to be a fantastic job. And then as part of this plan, um, we follow the future ready librarians. Um, and there's like, let's see, six, eight pieces to the puzzle. Um, and so every year or every three years, um, I'm gonna be looking at these different pieces of the puzzle and setting goals. Um, I felt like it was overwhelming to do every single one this year. Um, so I chose three areas where um, I thought I could set some goals. Um, and those were curriculum, instruction and assessment, community partnerships, and use of space and time, those three um, parts or components. Did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, first of all, I think this is a great idea to review and refresh and all that. My only concern is that, and maybe you can ask the book, is who makes the determination of what's considered bad information or what's considered outdated or, or inaccurate information is that you know, who's making that determination because one person's determination of what might be inaccurate might not always be true. I haven't really encountered that a whole lot besides like Pluto, you know, not being a, a planet anymore considered that. Is, is um, that fast or is it opinion? 
argument based? I, uh, I would, yeah, fact based because it's nonfiction text. Okay. So I guess I can't think of any other examples where. And, you know, there have been I'm not some, sure. Um, libraries that have found themselves in the middle of some situations because uh, it's a highly controversial uh, topics. Um, there is a list of those books, um, and, and it's done in those books. We can try to pull it in. So, and those are mainly fiction yeah. books. And I guess I can't think of a specific concern, but what you're talking about is what I'm trying to get to is if there's some concern about a certain book that maybe is or might come into the library, are you this, the sole determinant of whether that book comes or is there, is there a review of well, several people? Or how, is there, a, there is a process. process? Yes, okay. we'll, we'll be getting, getting to that actually. Um, so as far as my goals that I thought were important, um, curriculum, there really is no set curriculum for the library. Um, so um, every week I, ha I see the elementary and middle school students for about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so one of my goals this year, and I've been working on it, is coming up with um, curriculum so that um, we're not going week to week by week. Um, and then also um, digital citizenship, that's another curriculum um, piece that I've been working on. And then just um, working with other educators to work on critical learning competencies and um, critical thinking, information literacy, those types of things. Um, community partnerships, I am hoping once a year at least to involve the community a little bit more by doing a maybe a food and book event. Um, a lot of schools do breakfast with parents and, and books um, or family book club, something that involves the community a little bit more besides um, like scholastic book fairs. And then also to keep our relationship with Lakeview Community Library going and maybe growing that as well. And then as far as space and time, I was really thinking about the new library. Um, I'm really hoping that we can utilize it as much as possible. Um, this library here is underused um, probably, and at times the elementary, middle school library, there's too many things going on that it's, it, it gets to be too much. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to um, fit everybody's needs, I guess, for that. Um, and I'm hoping that everybody will feel welcome, whether you're four years old or 18 years old. So that's going to be a, quite the task to make everybody feel welcome um, with that. Okay. So there is a huge reconsideration policy. So if, if anybody, um, I could go through, let's see. So any resident, any employee or student of the school district may express an informal concern um, or a formal request for reconsideration. So no one outside of the district, besides maybe a teacher that lives outside the district, can do that. So it has to be someone that really has the best interest of the district at heart. Um, so what happens is they fill out a form, and there is a form attached to this. Um, and um, we put a committee together. And actually, I was a part of this committee like 15, 20 years ago. There was a challenge. And as a teacher, I was on that committee. Um, but it would be a librarian and then um, two full-time staff members their name drawn at random, um, and the committee um, would then follow steps to review the material in question. Um, the material will remain in circulation or use during the reconsideration process. There are some schools that when a book is questioned, they set it you know, outside of the library. But within this policy, it stays until a decision has been made. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll finish and then, yeah. 
Okay. Um, so each member of the committee will individually read the material in question in its entirety. I think that's really important because people take bits and pieces out of literature um, and make judgments when they haven't read the entire thing because um, it's not just little pieces that make up literature, but the, the entirety. Um, each member of the committee will individually review um, for opinions of the material in question. And then the committee will hold a meeting to discuss the material in question. Um, it will be held within two months of the filing of the reconsideration filing. And then a vote will be held on the material in question. Ma majority will rule. And then uh, there will be a report given. The form will be then given to the school principal and the person that made the complaint. If the person who made the complaint is not happy, then um, it actually goes to the Board of Education, the school board. So um, the superintendent would gather an appeals committee. The committee will consist of the librarian, one of the original committee members, um, two school board members, and one administrator. Um, the above process will be repeated with the decision of the appeals committee being final. So that's kind of like whatever is, you know, um, voted on and, and considered, that's what goes. Can I, can I try something? Yeah. So you said during that reconsideration period, the book remains in circulation? Yes. Until the determination is made. Correct. I mean, that's something, you know, it, this part was here before I became librarian. Um, I know with other schools, sometimes it, it isn't in circulation. Put it aside while it's being reviewed. That's what I would think in my mind. But I guess I'm thinking that it's questionable by maybe one or two people, whereas there might be other people that don't feel the same way. So it's almost like you're making a decision before everything's been looked at. You know, ev uh, the book read and um, discussed. I mean, that's the way I see it. I mean, that's one way they get them to read, I guess. Right now, that's not happening. I guess to some degree, you have to have trust in the people that are purchasing and, and looking at what experts are saying. Um, but it's your decision. Um, I think that would, yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you have an appeal in a court system, you don't have actors of the lower court that are part of the decision of the next appellate. Mm -hmm. It should be a separation of, of those involved. I think it's what you're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. I think so. And like, and, we're the ones that the voters have to be in charge, right? And that's the representative. 
agree with what you're Uh, I think that that's actually about it, besides the reconsideration form itself. That was kind of the highlights. Yes. We. Students don't like them as much, actually, the ebooks. The audiobooks, they do. But so I can go. And I would say, I think, you know, Lisa and I, um, we had a school in Chuang County that went through this about a year ago. Um, and first thing Lisa and I did, I'm like, do we have any books on this list, right? You know, are there any things there? And she's done a wonderful job of making sure that the content there could be stuff that there's a reason we haven't had any of this happen in 15 plus years is because we aren't depressed and we haven't had that stuff on there. So um, I think if, you know, I think there's been some good dialogue here. This will be something every year we'll come on and, and if we're good, um, I think Lisa and I can have some conversations from this, what we feel comfortable about. And, and just like our other policies, this is a living document and can get us some things to think about. No, in the end, this bill would be the final say anyways. However, it gets to uh, that, in, in the end, it would come to the board for a final say if you go through the process of this. So, no, you always have final say. So we never, ever, ever have to worry about that. So. Well, I, I think this is great and it's wonderful to hear mm -hmm. all of this and really appreciate what you're doing every day in our school. And I, I think the trust is there, but I also think that when we're in this position, we want to ensure that you said you kind of came in and this is how the policy was already established for you. Right. So I think looking to the future and seeing how things are changing so quickly and um, there's been some really bad school board situations that I would want to ensure this district never experiences. And so just looking towards the future, I, I like everything in this. I would like to see that one piece change, though, on the the reconsideration policy that a book be set aside until. Um, I mean, I do have to submit this to the state, so. I mean, I could revamp it. I don't know. I agree with Remy. I'd like to see that change, and also the change to about the final say. I know you made a great point. Two fifths doesn't quite cut it. I mean, not that we're going to have that problem, but I, I just want to be prepared in the unlikely event it comes up that we're, we're not now having to run back to change a policy when we could maybe change this policy before it's submitted right now. I, and I think it's, again, I think no. it's doing awesome, but just those two little changes, I think, mm -hmm. would, would potentially save us some grief down the road. If the final review or appeal it just with the board itself, itself and the change about it just to put us temporarily aside until it's finally resolved. My two cents. Hopefully, we can have to see that on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I don't think that's going to be much. Hopefully, it's yeah. never. I think we trust that what you're doing is, is well, not, not going to cause problems. But in the likely event it does, right. because things are evolving and changing in this world so fast, and there's always the the push to put other agendas out there that we have to be prepared to handle it. So is uh, the time timeline for this is before it gets submitted to the state for this year, or next time we do this next year at this round? What would be your time frame? How quickly can it be? What is your? I don't know what your time frame is. Like when does it have to get to the state? But uh, they're they've been pretty flexible because they're fun. I think they're enforcing it. Yeah. It's yeah. not every school district. I don't want it to be undue onerous to you, but it's just something to think these changes can they be done before you submit? I I think so. Yeah. I feel like we're talking about. Them. We can address it now. But. 
but that's the consensus of the report. Right, I guess that's what some of the rest of us think. Oh, sorry, we're taking a little far. <laughs> you didn't expect us, did you? No. <laughs> it wasn't our intent to give you a hard time. Uh, it's, it's okay. Something that no, it's about. it's it's in the news. There's there's so much out there right now, unfortunately. And how many books do you really are you purchasing more books, or is this just you just been consolidating all the books that are currently here? Um, I'm buying more because we have gaps in our collection, um, and as you know, students' interests change. So yeah, I I am purchasing more. Yeah. Oh yeah. There is some in here, especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Lisa and I will take a look at that. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. We can't wait to see what your new library is going to look like. Thank you. Building reports for Okay. All right. So. Um, talking about our strong classrooms, we had our 4K night here on the 12th, so last week, Monday. Um, it was very well attended. We sent out 20 letters to our new 4K students that we know are coming. We had 18 um, families show up um, and some that didn't even um, get a letter, so they saw it on Facebook. I also hung up flyers at all the gas stations, so just really excited. We had 10 tables um, around the circle. Um, Mental Health America was here, um, birth to three. Then we had um, all of our therapists and specialists also there to, and the families went around each of the tables and they had a chance to do a little activity with the students. So it was really positive. I gave tours all night and I can tell you it's a thousand steps around the square. <laughs> so it was very fun. Lots of this is the first time we've done this. this Absolutely. Um, we're seeing um, it being very competitive in that 4K market of getting our students here at Random Lake. So with that, we're going to up our game a little bit and get a, um, a welcome night. And it was really um, a vision that our, our psychologist, Tracy, um, had seen in Grafton. And she's like, oh, this would be so cool. So just really excited that we could make that happen. Um, then the week before, on the 5th, we had a literacy night, and Jamie Utech had um, kind of piloted, or, I don't think this is the first time that she's had a literacy night, but really took charge of that. They had about 10 students show up and their families. Again, just highlighting what happens in the title program and how she services students, so really positive. Um, and then... I thought this is a nice segue into our reading resources. So we've been really staying up on the Act 20 information. We narrowed it down to two resources. Um, the team of teachers and Jamie and myself gave a presentation to the staff on our last Wednesday. It was an ELA Wednesday. And then they we did a survey. So I, I think we're getting really close to having a decision made for next year um, for that literacy program. And then again, what's nice about it is that um, um, it will, if we pick one off the approved list, some of that money can be refunded to the district. So there were only four curriculums approved on that list, and the two that we looked at were the ones with the highest rating. Um, so that's how our decision kind of came from there, and I'll keep you posted. All right, so earlier you had talked about uh, the money that uh, Mr. Wills brings in with the certification, so I wanted to highlight that we have 65 certifications that were earned uh, per semester in Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook. So um, that's uh, quite, 
quite a great number, and again, he brings in money for each of those certifications. So well done to the students and to Mr. Wills. Multi-level systems of support training. So there was a team of elementary, middle, and high school staff that went to CESA 7 last week and uh, went through training on just how to really target and what is that uh, system of support could look like academically and behaviorally as we're uh, continuing to learn new and improved ways to respond to our student needs. Um, so more to come on that as we go to dig deeper into that process. Now thinking about strong culture, um, our core value for this month is kindness and the student services teams across all three buildings have been really working together to kind of share that that core value which is really helpful. Um, we often do our spirit days together now and so I think it's just been really positive. Um, because of that idea of kindness, we did an assembly, and there was an assembly at all three buildings. Um, at the, I can speak for the elementary. We did um, how fast could you get your snow clothes on um, race, and so the little ones got their snow clothes on, and it was it was a lot of fun. Um, then on top of that, they're doing the RAM salutes, um, where students are talking about how they're seeing kindness in the building. And then from those, we pull in a randomizer, and a student gets to punch a, a cup and inside the cup is a prize so it's called the heart punch can't challenge it's in the elementary office if you ever want to check it out um, then I'm moving on to the National School Counselor Week so uh, February 5th through 9th was National School Counselor Week, and so we just want to give a shout out to our three school counselors, um, Sarah Haw at the elementary, Pam Rogers Middle School, and Jake Frias at the high school. Three outstanding individuals that work very hard and um, really do deserve this shout out. Uh, interactive mural grade level contest. So for the middle school, Mrs. Maslick has worked out as we're leading up to our fine arts open house uh, on March 7th, that each grade level for the middle school, they have a part of the wall where they are designing an interactive mural. So it's like you can put yourself into the mural, take a picture, it looks like you're part of the mural. So um, when you come on that night to the open house, you'll see uh, different parts of that, uh, different walls that will have that for each of the grade levels. So it's pretty fun. The entire class is involved in being a part of creating uh, and putting that mural together. So you'll see different parts of it on that night. A middle school service project that's going along with our kindness um, theme is the cereal challenge. Uh, we did it for the first time last year, and it's uh, the Do Good Wisconsin. It's a statewide nonprofit organization where you collect cereal boxes so you have uh, students uh, that can bring in as many cereal boxes as you can. You set it up in like a domino uh, piece uh, around the gym so you do different uh, themes or designs and then you set it off and make, you know, hopefully it all goes down. Um, but then you could win a prize. You submit your video to this organization. You could win a prize if you have the most cereal boxes and the best design. So the kids had a lot of fun with it last year. So this is our uh, second year doing that as well. NHS blood drive Thursday, February 29th. So if you feel like you got a little too much blood in you, come on in. We'll take it. So it's a great, great uh, fundraiser there. FBLA Recognition Week was last week, uh, National FBLA Recognition Week, and this week is National FFA Recognition Week. So they're always back to back. So um, Steve Wills had some different activities and dress up days last week, and uh, Whitney Radke has some wonderful events uh, this week lined up, dress up days, and ending with our pie social on Friday. So feel free to come in, support FFA, have a piece of pie, and you can watch some teachers get creamed in the face with pie as well. That's always a good time. All right, so in our strong communities, on March 8th, we have the family prom. They're calling it Ties and Tears. I mean, you see a lot of the daddy-daughter dance. This is involving the whole family, so excited they're going to be doing that again. And then Susan and I have been working together to have um, two nights 
or one night each semester. So this is our spring combined um, community night. It's going to be the spring fine arts open house. Um, so we worked with teachers today to kind of set that up. Um, and we're going to have um, parent teacher conferences that night as well for, for families. Yeah, it'll be really nice of that night, uh, our high school choir. So solo ensemble is the weekend following that. So uh, different students are going to be singing their pieces that they're going to be doing at the solo ensemble, as well as um, all three grade levels uh, artwork that will be on display. So it'll really be a fun time. ACP guest speakers. So in February, we or this month, we had Sam Ullman and Alexia Bierenbaum. So Sam, she works with the FBI, and so she was able to talk about her um, what got her into that field and all the experiences she had at Random Lake and then post Random Lake. Uh, and the kids were very. Uh, very excited to listen to her, had a lot of great questions. And then we had Alexia Birnbaum talking about interior design, and she did a wonderful job as well with lots of different questions. So this was a series of four different speakers um, that we had. Yeah, I was just looking four different speakers, so that rounded it out. We did it a little different from the last couple of years where we've done panels. This where we wanted them to get up close and personal with different kinds of fields and ask as many questions as they could. So we look to continue and, and have invite more of our uh, alumni back to speak on their careers. So lastly, want to end with student recognition. So congratulations to Chase. He won the regional spelling bee um, for our area. So he is off to the state bee on March 16th. So um, congratulations to Chase, and we wish him well. Badger boys. So we have Spencer and Patrick who will be participating with Badger boys. And then Dawson, who is going to be a counselor this year. So um, we're glad that they're able to do that. And then congratulations to our wrestling individual team. Um, at this, at the time when I put it, they were going on to sectionals. But now we've got our state qualifiers. So uh, congratulations to Michael. Stone and Torin for going on to individual state, as well as Ariana, who is going to be our first female state wrestler um, going on to state. So congratulations to the four of them. We're going to be sending them off with a kickoff uh, pep rally, either Wednesday or Thursday. I'm working with Brandon right now on organizing that. So uh, well done to them. And honestly, it's been something that I've been you know, wrestling with for about 17 years since I was a high school principal. And I really like what they've come to with this. This is a really creative way to let's showcase all these great talents that our kids are doing and find reasons for our parents to come in and do this. So um, we've tried many different iterations. This is just another one. Um, but this one, I this one I think might get some likes. So just know that's the innovation we're always trying to do to make things better. So. With that, I also, um, uh, and I'm gonna, I'll do this now, I won't have to do it later. You're gonna see a new segment in uh, the board meeting from time to time. I'm very excited to let you know that Eric Rathke has accepted and is our new community rec coordinator. Um, it's a very, very part-time piece, and this really kind of hit a neuron for me about four weeks ago when Eric reached out and said, hey, can we start Sunday gym? I'm happy to be around and open the gym for everybody so we can play. I'm like, well, Eric, you do a lot of this already. How would you like to do it on a formal basis? So um, Eric has gotten a lot done. Um, he's reached out to all of our youth sports. He's been in some board meetings already. Um, and really his job here for the rest of the school year is meet up with our different groups and start finding themes on what we can do as a district to help each one of these groups. So... Um, thank you, Rini, for giving us uh, some of his time, which I know he is already probably busy already, but uh, uh, the, the local connections and things, we're seeing a really a lot of traction that we haven't seen before. So um, as a reminder, this has been four years in progress. Uh, we had Coach uh, Pfeiffer in this position about four years ago, and when he retired, we looked at kind of redoing this a little bit different. So um, we have... 
Mr. Frias is now the fitness center supervisor as a part-time piece. Uh, we have staff members in there regularly that uh, are doing great. And now the last piece of the puzzle was getting a somebody out to having these conversations in the community. So soon you're going to see them walking around with the Random Lake Community Rec Department logo, which once you have a polo, it's official, right? So um, we're working on that, but I'm really excited about another person just helping keep this flywheel spinning. So. Okay. All the board committee reports. Um, policy met, and uh, I think we're going to talk it about that right now. We're moving on to the next item then. Thanks. Okay. So we did have quite a packet of policies here to go through this time. And the committee decided that um, we were going to pull out only one policy, the 5350, and put that under the first reading, but have the rest of that packet as a single reading. So that means that we could um, we can vote on it tonight under our new rules on policy. So um, is there a motion to approve the changes? Rainey and Amy, and any questions or discussion? So what's 5350? 5350 is the, um, there's a suicide. Uh, there was a statement in the old one, because it kind of got refreshed. There was a statement in the old one that we're going to try to bring back into the new one. Um, about just the urgency for staff um, to report and be alert for things like this. But uh, um, we're going to reach out to Richard and to what we can do to get this done. So that actually starts the process of making the change. Right, so that we can make the change potentially for the second. So we're talking about the rest of the all the rest of them. Okay. Um, so I just said, I just want to make sure that the rest of them are in there. Do you think that's possible? Do you know their location of the time? So first it just says, so it's in the open enrollment, termination of open enrollment application. Okay, so it's under public. Okay. So, all right. So then, on the sale checks one for page forty-one. Kim, can you tell us what policies those are when you find them?
policy are we talking about? Uh, 7440.01. Okay. And I guess I'm, I'm not quite sure what, so the, the stuff of that being, and I, like, I'm not really sure what that's 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 just the title was added to that? I guess that's when the title was there, but I wasn't sure if that was policy. And so then this one is to change, so maybe it doesn't make sense. But the two things typically get left. Yeah, but that was more of a typo, right? Like, that's just like. So, yeah, it was just like empty parentheses. <laughs> and then, I don't know, the non discrimination of food services, there's the paragraph about English, the paragraph about how to file for. So the non discrimination is based on eighty five thirty one and Eighty five hundred is food service and eighty five thirty one is where you read the rules. So they're both saying the whole thing about like if somebody Yeah, but that's just like that's just like Eighty nine thirteen. I'm questioning what that says. So, so it says a reasonable accommodation is not required for an individual who believes that they are being regarded as having a disability. I don't even get what that means. Are they trying to say? against somebody who's claiming they have a disability that hasn't been met. Based on the next sentence, it sounds like somebody's just saying they have a disability, that that's not enough to get the accommodation. But that isn't what it says. Like, I don't know what that means. So which part of, so we're looking at reasonable accommodation. Is that the sentence we're on? Yeah, I'm looking at, yeah, in the first sentence, like, I have anybody reading the second sentence. So a reasonable okay. accommodation is not required for an individual who believes they're being regarded They being I don't get like I don't get it right. Like, are they saying somebody else is regarding them as having a disability, but they don't have a disability? Are they saying they think they have a disability, but it's not medically I don't know what it means. I just that it's not medically valid. But anyway, they don't have a medical excuse, right. so we aren't going to yeah. accommodate that. But I don't think that's what that says. It's because you have to look at what they replaced it with, right? A reasonable accommodation is not required for an individual who is merely regarded as having a disability. So what they're saying is just because you think they have a disability doesn't mean you have to accommodate. Right. But, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's no, I think the way it was before. It made more 
that's because I have one two four, and they're trying to make it not say mirror. Right, right. Because right. they're trying to make it the same color. So now it's a different sure. color. Yeah. And 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 what what that does is it does protect us. Um, there's a lot of things with ADA and, and, and other pieces where just because you think somebody has a disability doesn't mean we have to accommodate employees requesting reasonable accommodations. We must cooperate. With. So um, it, there's there's been some law there, there's been some um, cases in mental health where um, a case down in Kentucky, I believe, where an individual that had undiagnosed mental health issues uh, was terminated. Um, and later on found out they had a mental health issue, came back, sued the district for millions of dollars um, because it was merely regarded that she was happy. So I think things like this, you have to be careful because that's a response to, I think, that case that you just talked about. Right there. So there's some ADA things that still apply in there, but uh, it's, there's... So how does that apply then to that? So, reasonable accommodation is not required if we think somebody has a disability. But, but they haven't requested it. But, right, but so then how do they come back after they've been fired and sued? I mean, I just don't think it's not the same thing. I guess if everybody else thinks it's not the same thing. I mean, well, I mean, we can always ask on that, yeah. you know, just I mean, leave it in and we can ask what, what they're, what that is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's something that we have to not pass it over. My last thing is on page six. And so it's in um, part B. It changed the complaint. It's changed from must to should. Complaint should be filed within 30 days of the circumstance. So that one has been changed from like having an absolute you have to complain within 30 days of whatever that But the next two or three, so what it gives the district administrator and what, what it gives the school is like absolute. Like you can, you can respond within 10 days, you can respond within 60 days. So it feels a little bit like we've made it a little more wishy-washy, or they've made it a little more wishy-washy there on how long somebody's got to actually respond to file a complaint. It should be filed. What does that mean? That means any time that they've been there for six years, right? They should do it 30 days first. If they don't, there's not an excuse for it. So I don't I mean, maybe ask Lola what the, what the rationale is for changing must to should, because I feel like the policy was perfectly fine the way it was. But I don't get why. And 30 days is plenty of time to provide the district with the complaint. So that's my last thing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so are we wanting to Um, I'm thinking that we can go ahead and approve and then just get those answers and make the changes if we, to those words, back to what it was or, um, you know, leave it as they propose it. Is that each of these would be technical? I mean, really, we're talking about technical issues. And technical issues can be just changed without board. What, what's technical? Those are just for information, mm -hmm. right? So we'll get to talk about it again. Right. Okay. After Kim gets us some answers, so we'll be talking about it probably before next month because we, we have a second reading on that we have questions on anyway. So All right. So did we have a we have a motion? Yes. We do. 
All right. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And then, as we discussed, um, the first reading for um, uh, 5350. So that'll be back on the agenda for next month for a second reading and hopefully a final vote. And then that takes us into new salaried staff. Um, Gabriel Delora, yes, uh, special education teacher, and Eric Rathke, the community recreation coordinator, which we already talked about. Um, the uh, Gabriel is a long-term sub. Yep, long-term sub uh, for the rest of this year. Okay. Then we have new support staff, Hannah. Well, I don't know how to say that. Prosh and Dominic Simon. IT assistance with Lee. And we have um, co-curricular coaches and advisors uh, paid. Do um, we have anybody new on here? They all look pretty like we've seen them around somewhere. Yes, I can see everyone we've done. And then we go into volunteer um, non-paid notifications with volleyball, multiple volleyball, and wrestling. I don't know if any of those are wrestlers. Okay. And then Mike, you're okay. up. Okay, very good. Well, we hit uh, Eric a couple times on the agenda, so um, we, we're <laughs> excited about that piece. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Brian Stout. So Brian has courageously um, decided to be the write-in board member um, coming up at the next election. So Gary, if you can put some word out on whose name to put in. They can put anyone they'd like. Uh, but Brian has come and said he would be more than willing to fill that spot in a uh, different way than we have in the past. So as we vote and we have another couple, so we'll be kind of keeping the name out there so people know what we're Brian, you want to share anything about yourself? Oh, don't open me up for that. Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> I'm an 86 graduate of Randall Lake High School. Two of my, two of my four kids graduated from high school. I spent 25 years in the Army as a nuclear engineer. I spent uh, my second career in higher education, UW Sheboygan, Milwaukee Area Technical College, Moray Park Technical College, where I'm at now in West Bend. I'm an associate dean for manufacturing. I love education. I'm a lifelong learner. Brandon Lake did a wonderful job with my wife and I. We feel blessed to have the opportunity to move here and get the Brandon Lake experience. And I feel like I'm in the right place, the right time, and it'll make a difference with you on the It'll make a difference in our community. Because education and college people are going to improve their lives and improve their lives. Thanks. I guess that was my. That's a great elevator. Yeah. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I just want another guy in the board. <laughs> My third bullet. Um, so the now, if I'm right or wrong on this, is it the whole district? Is it just the high school? Secondary. So mid, middle school and high school are going to a day unplugged, um, March first, correct? March first is the And. I, I, I love that we're doing this. Um, there's a lot of research coming out. You know, and, and I, I love that we're doing it because we have been one of the first districts to really embrace technology, right? We have one-to-one -one devices. We're doing a lot of things. But as we're doing this, we're also going to be one of the first districts that are helping people understand that not all technology is good. And as we hear about algorithms and we hear about this, the effects on social media are, are really – they're out there for our kids. And what we're trying to do is take a day to show our entire uh, community here that you can live a whole school day without a phone. So um, this will be exciting. It will be fun. I'm not thinking everyone is going to be marching in with excitement. Um, but uh, I, I'm uh, going to reach out to some of our 
friends in the news and try to make this kind of a fun event to see what it's like. Um, I think a, I, I'm as bad as the kids are, right? Like this is right here and, and, and we're always looking at what's happening, what's that new email. Um, it's important to let our brains a little break. So um, I appreciate the courage that the secondary staff has done in doing this and please support it and celebrate it. Um, we're not saying phones are bad, but for one day, why don't you see what it's like when you get a break from it? So uh, pretty exciting stuff, and I want to make sure you guys knew about it uh, before it comes here. In the so if we can't list. get a hold of you on March 1st because you're not carrying your phone? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Call the landline. Call the landline. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're hearing things, and 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 this isn't this isn't like a first step of this. I, I'm hoping this becomes a reflective process that, oh, I can live without this by my side. Oh, I actually had a better conversation at lunch with friends because I didn't have this. Hopefully, we see that this is an important tool. These are important tools, but it's also important to make connections with real people sometimes too. So, stay tuned. Cool. So can't wait to hear back. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, all right anything else no all right. we are good is there go. a motion to adjourn katie is there a second is that reedy all those in favor please say aye, aye. opposed motion